Hello and welcome to Exploited Crimes and Technology. My name is Opal Singleton and we come to you every Saturday afternoon at 3 o'clock right here on AM 590, The Answer. Well, it is a crazy, crazy world out there, especially if you work in the world of human trafficking. I am so darn busy. You know, we have this kind of convergence of uh of crisis coming, uh, coming and going and coming and going. And you think it's going to get better, then it gets worse and then it gets better. And you wonder what the heck you think you're doing. Anyway, this show is brought to you by Million Kids, M-I-L-L-I-O-N, Million Kids, because more than a million kids have been trafficked throughout the world. And uh, I do, I just really want to talk from my heart today with you. I have been combating trafficking now since 2008. In fact, I'll just share with you a little bit how it all started. I retired, uh, so you know I'm not a spring chicken here and uh, might not even be a summer chicken at this point. But anyway, on we go. We keep doing this. And uh, my church had a mission in Cambodia, and my background is international marketing. I actually have over 3 million frequent flyer miles, believe it or not. And I have some of them left, and if I'd ever get away from this microphone, I might go use them. (laughs) But anyway, for right now, we're fighting the good fight. Well, once I went to Cambodia and understood sex trafficking and labor trafficking over there, I um, I really, it just kind of caught my heart. And I came back and I met a, a deputy from the Riverside County Sheriff Department who was starting a human trafficking task force. And he asked me to volunteer and support them. And I did. What he didn't know about me is uh, I am a rabid researcher, and I still am to this day. I can't tell you why. There are days that my heart would be a lot more peaceful if I didn't read all this crap, you know, because I think to myself, why do you care? There are days I say, why do you care? You know, you can't fix all this. It's so big. And I'm going to tell you, folks, I I mean, I sometimes am between a rock and a hard place. There are days I just go for a walk or, or, uh, you know, go out and, and look at birds or do whatever and just enjoy my life because it is accelerating. And I'd like to tell you that we're fixing it. But I'm not going to tell you that because I don't lie. Uh, We aren't fixing this. This is getting worse and worse and worse. And over the last year, it is absolutely accelerated in ways that I never could have predicted. You know, up until COVID, uh, you know, things were pretty much under control. Okay. We had um, something of a border lockdown, not really a border lockdown, but something of it. Uh, At least it had trickled down instead of the massive flow of human beings that we're seeing at this point. And they are human beings uh, that are involved in all this. Some of them are perpetrators and some of them are victims. And, uh, you know, how do you know the difference? And I have kind of sorted through my heart that one of the things that I can tell you, and I have to remind myself all the time, that you cannot look at bodies of people as a whole. Uh, You just can't do that, okay, because it never is effective. These are individual people. And I say that in the fight of human trafficking because it's very important. Forgetting the border thing, let's just talk a second about our own kids. What happened with COVID is we saw an, uh, just a, a total crisis take over uh, where suddenly our kids are not going to school and they are doing online learning. Now, if you know me at all, you know that I'm not against technology. This generation is going to live in a world of technology. They are. And it's going to where we're at today is child's play compared to where it's going to be 12 months from now, 18 months now, as we start to put money transfer onto uh, our kids apps. You know, already you have Snapchat and uh, now you can monetize a selfie. And I'm like, what the heck is that? You know, (laughs) well, it turns out there's millions of kids sending selfies off to Pornhub and making money through Snapcash or PayPal or other ways to get a new pair of Nikes. Actually, Pornhub, I'm I'm going in a different direction I intended on the show, but I'm on a roll. So we're going to leave it here. Pornhub last year 
actually the first part of this year even, had to take down almost 10 million videos that many of them were our kids who took their naked photo and sent it into them thinking they're going to make $40,000 a week as an amateur porn star. And now guess what? They find out that those photos didn't just go to Pornhub, but they went out all around the world. Pornhub's the largest porn site in the world. They have something like... uh, 48 billion downloads, okay? And they needed material. And so they published this to make some money and our kids go, whoa, baby, this is a way to make money. And we are about to have most of your apps, I'm gonna predict to you by the end of the year, China's way ahead of us for what it's worth. They own the uh, Chinese uh, corporation ByteDance, owns TikTok. And uh, China has already come out with a digital yawn, the People's Republic of China Bitcoin, if you will. And they are promoting it like crazy. And if it ties to TikTok or other apps, which is maybe Badoo or some of the others that are out there, it is bound to become very quickly one of the greatest uh, financial transaction types in the world. Uh, and, you know, Facebook wanted to do that, but uh, our friend Maxine Waters shut that down. I use that term loosely. Anyway, shut that down and uh, because she did not want to destabilize the U.S. dollar. Well, I get that. I really do. You know, um, you know we're printing dollar bills like crazy and there's not gold behind it. So inflation is bound to go up every time they finance one of those or two of those trillion dollar packages up there and don't put more gold behind the money and just keep printing money and let the debt go higher, we're going to have inflation. But that aside, we are behind in the digital uh, currency race. And when it gets tied to things like Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat, our kids' lives will change, and so will yours. And so one of the things that I saw as kids went online for COVID is suddenly we got really, really busy, okay? Because think about this. You're putting nine-year-olds on the Internet without any uh, real understanding of what is happening. You know, they get the technology. You hand a seven-year-old a device or a nine-year-old device, they know how to do stuff you and I take all afternoon to do. You know, I have case after case after case of seven and nine-year-olds and eight-year-olds where they actually go out and they download some app like Kick or uh, Whisper or uh, Tender or Meet Me or any of the others, and they hook up with somebody, they take the photos, they know how to take those photos, they know how to find those sites, they know how to insert the app and, and upload and download and send videos. They know how to Uvu and Skype and Zoom and all of the things that you and I are still trying to figure out how to get your picture up there and unmute, okay? <laughs> they get the technology. But nobody is talking to a seven or eight or nine-year-old child about what pedophilia is and where a naked photo goes when you hit sin. And so it changes absolutely everything. Suddenly, the entire family is in crisis. And one of the things I want you to understand is when a child gets violated in social media, then what is going to happen is it's going to change their life forever. Well, I'm off on a tangent that I didn't intend to get onto, but I want you to see that this is part of the changing of our world that is going on. Because what you're starting to see is that you have police departments that have been defunded. Okay. You're starting to see activity within the state of California that literally will make up to 12,000 sex offenders get out early. And I'm not saying they all will. I'm saying potentially they will. And over in L.A., they are doing away with enhanced sentencing every chance they get, not only on the new crimes, but on the crimes that were prosecuted and put into prison 
they're, the district attorney over there is saying, hey, don't even consider that enhanced sentencing. Get their initial sentence. If they've served their time, get them out of there. And I don't even want one of our prosecutors going over and trying to block it at the parole hearing. They should get out free. So our kids are being more vulnerable than ever. And our ability to prosecute and even keep a sex offender in prison is really, really deteriorating. So this is is like, you know, we're scrambling every day. It's it's like getting up to scrambled eggs every morning. When I come into my office, you think, what's next? This is Opal Singleton. It's Exploited Crimes and Technology. Stay with us. We will be right back. Societal Shift, A World Without Borders and a Home Without Walls. This is the most important book you will read this year, especially if you have children or grandchildren. We are living at the most important time in all of history. In 2020, the entire world will be connected by internet, more than six billion people coming together. Technology will provide many great advantages for our kids, but a world without borders for our kids is also a world without borders for pimps, predators, pedophiles, cartels, and organized crime. It is a home without walls because 87% of the kids sleep with their phone. It is the greatest societal experiment of all time. Our kids are technology geniuses and their parents are technophobic. Some are techno impotent. New apps come with no warnings on how a predator will use them against our kids. Advancing technologies like encrypted messaging, vaporware, artificial intelligence, cryptocurrency, and the dark net will challenge law enforcement, teachers, and parents to keep kids safe. Recent research states that 9,000 kids a day are being blackmailed with a naked photo and 58% will meet their predator. It is indeed a societal shift and one in which most parents are unprepared. If you are a parent or grandparent, teacher, counselor, or social worker, please take time to read Societal Shift. Only $18.99 plus $6 shipping. Order today at millionkids.org. That's millionkids, M-I-L-L-I-O-N-K-I-D-S dot org. It'll be the greatest gift you can give your family and yourself. Order Societal Shift today. Million Kids takes checks and credit cards. Opal Singleton, the author, will personally sign the book and send it to you. Again, go to millionkids.org and order Societal Shift today. Join Million Kids. Keep our kids safe from predators. Hello, this is Opal Singleton of Exploited Crimes and Technology. Hey, there are many good restaurants in the Inland Empire, but really great restaurants are hard to find. Let me tell you about the Toasted Barrel in Corona. It's a trendy, upscale steakhouse with great pasta and seafood. It's a fantastic choice for birthdays and anniversaries or just that special night out with your loved one and friends. Inland Empire Magazine has awarded them best restaurant and brunch for the past three years. The owners, Ed and Shirley, are friendly and attentive to your needs. If you're a prime rib connoisseur, this place is for you. Go ahead and try it out. The Toasted Barrel, located at 1300 El Sobrante Road in Corona. Or Google them at Toasted Barrel to make reservations. I guarantee you, you're going to love it. Be sure and tell Ed and Shirley that Opal sent you. It will be a night you'll never forget. Real estate sales in the Inland Empire are really hot. Sellers and buyers recognize that these low interest rates will not last. Sean and Colleen at Caldwell Banker Armstrong Properties in Riverside are proud to sponsor this show. They are the best in the Inland Empire. They're fair, honest, creative, and they care about you and your situation. If you're in the market to buy or sell a home, call Sean and Colleen at 951-529-4066. AM 590, the answer. Hello and welcome back to Exploited Crimes and Technology. This is Opal Singleton and we are talking about human trafficking right here in the Inland Empower and uh, also social media exploitation. So many times our kids get involved on the internet and they get one of those fantasy relationships and they start sending off photos and the next thing you know, they think they're gonna go out and meet that guy and get that photo back and they end up getting further violated. So we're like right up to our ears in this because of COVID, you had all these kids online. And one of the problems is, is that there was no pre-planning for any kind of crisis like this. And uh, it's almost like this great societal experiment. This uh, I'm going to talk about undocumented kids that are coming in and going into our schools in a minute. But it is like this whole thing is like some big uh, experimental project. And I don't know about you, but there are days I just can't get my head around it. Now, one of my problems is I'm way too informed. Okay, I've been doing this now 10 years. 
I, I sat with parents, you know, who are missing their kids or have been recruited or have know that their child is now out into prostitution or, uh, you know, dealing with fentanyl and drugs and things like that. And it just destroys an entire family. And uh, that, that makes a huge impact on our society. And one of the things that's really heartbreaking for me and, and this is not true in Riverside. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. But I, I'm watching what is going on over in Los Angeles. You know, they defunded the police over there to the tune of $150 million. Now they, their crime rate has gone way, 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 way up. And so now they put $30 million of it back in. But at the same time, they are uh, dissolving. DA Gascon over there has decided to do away with a hardcore gang unit and the hardcore drug unit. And uh, I want you to understand where all of this comes together. There's a convergence of activity taking place in our society, in our communities here in Southern California that are just a bit scary, okay? Maybe, I don't think that's too strong a word. I don't like melodrama. I, I believe, I'm a solutions-oriented person. You can't do this if you're not into how do I fix this? And what can I do? That's why I've trained a half a million people. And that's why I have this show for you today is to educate you, maybe to give you a different perspective, not necessarily to get you to draw a specific conclusion, but maybe to open your eyes on a subject matter that maybe you really haven't wanted to look at or just haven't had time to look at. But so many of our kids, what, what will happen is now they're online and they're very vulnerable. You see, they're making their relationships online with advanced technology that we have done almost nothing to prepare them for other than to try to wag our finger and go, you be careful on that thing now. And I'm going to read your phone and I, you know, I'm going to get involved, except Kids are very, very busy. They are texting all day long, even half the night. 87% of kids sleep with their phone. And so unless you have a strategy, it is very difficult to stay on top of this. And so our kids, instead of making relationships with somebody down the street, they meet people online and they are highly influenced by what happens in social media. And that is really one of the things I want you to take a look at is the role of social media in being able to reach our, our young people and educate them and educate them on what is true. I mean, you know, now you put a, a hormonal child on any of the big four, that's Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and yes, TikTok, they're on there with over a billion and a half users. And this will be the first generation that'll have a million followers and they won't know who they are. And these people not only can follow your child and look at their videos by category, you don't think a pedophile knows which categories to look at, and then they send a text back to your child and you say to them, you know, hey, baby, you're hot, send me more videos, I wanna, I'm going to make you famous, you know, and off your little seven-year-old goes or nine-year-old goes. They do not know what adult pedophilia is. And you say to yourself, well, I don't want to harm them, so we won't, we're going to wait for that sex talk. The minute you put a kid on a phone, you better have a sex talk with them because they are going to learn about sex and it ain't going to be your grandma's kind of sex. Okay. Yeah. I often kid and I am kidding by the way here, but I always say, if you're putting an eight year old on a cell phone, you know, drop them off at the strip club for a few minutes and see how they work out. Now I'm kidding. Okay. That is brutal and that's child abuse. So don't do it. But when you are putting a child on a phone, that six, seven, eight, nine year old child on a phone, and they don't know what an adult pedophile is, they are going to learn about sex and it is not going to be what you want them to learn. So how do we prepare them? Because you're, you're making a decision to put a child on a phone that is an adult device. And you're hoping and praying that they have good judgment and like that. 
I, I, our organization, this is where you come when it goes wrong. Okay. Because the parents are just beside themselves. They send off a naked photo before COVID. It was believed that 18,000 kids in America a day were sending a naked photo. I think that number is true just in California based on my last 12 months, you know, and 9,000 kids a day, according to the university of Florida were being blackmailed by that photo. Kids don't know what to do when they get blackmailed. Think about it. For for most of them, their first it'll be their first sexual experience. They've been conned into sending off a body part picture somewhere because they thought it was a game and they thought it was funny or it was a dare or it was somebody they wanted to impress that they thought might think they're really hot. And they send that photo off and when it goes wrong, holy cow. That child's first sexual experience has just become one of shame and humiliation. And not only that, it's not going to go away. Some of you may have heard me a couple of weeks ago talking about the case of Twitter, where they will not take that photo down. They better by now, surely, because there's being a, a large lawsuit. But the kid was 13. More boys send naked photos than girls, by the way. More girls end up in prostitution than boys. But literally, he sent a picture off when he was 13 to what he thought was a hot 15-year-old girl. And of course, it's a pedophile. He has no barometer to figure that out. And he's hormonal. He's 15. And he's playing a video game. And he gets sucked in. And he sends that photo. He's 13. And here he is, 17 years old, and he's getting ready to go to college. And what happens to him? He still still sees his photo out there over and over and over. And he writes to Twitter and he goes to the school resource officer. Remember those? They're doing away with those over in L.A. So now where is a kid going to go? But anyway, in his case, he went to a school resource officer who connected him to the police department and the parents got involved and they wrote to Twitter and they wrote to Twitter. Here he is. He's now 17 trying to go off to college and his naked photo is going round and round the Internet. And Twitter writes back and says, I'm not going to take you down. This doesn't violate our policy. You know, now <laughs> taking some some uh, politicians off the air viol- violates their policy to have them on the air. But a 13 year old's naked photo does not. Vi- and they even took it so far, by the way, to say, oh, if you think your trademark's been violated, <laughs> says, when is your personal part of trademark? OK, <laughs> but anyway, this kid, they find out that picture has gone out 122,000 times and has been redistributed over 22 t- times, 2,200 times. So it's probably gone out to nearly a half a million people now. Now, that's not all that big a deal, quite frankly. I mean, I know child porn rings that have a million paid subscribers. They're paying $200 every six months, and there's a million of them. Do you get that? That's like 200 every six months. That's like $400 million in money laundering that is taking place while they take advantage and pass off our children's naked photos because our kids got sucked in and they don't understand what to do. And they end up being violated and extorted and sextorted and like that. So this is a really challenging time in our life with COVID, you know, locking down our kids and introducing the internet to very young children who don't understand the world they're living in. And none of us, apparently, there are a few of us, are willing to talk about it. But most people just kind of cover their eyes and go, oh, dear God, keep him safe. And it gets very, very crazy. So that's why we are so busy right now. And one of the things that is changing in our society, because without law enforcement, how do we get these kinds of cases investigated? And without a school resource officer, who does your kid go to tell? This is Opal Singleton. I'll be right back. Hello, this is Opal Singleton of Exploited Crimes and Technology. I want to tell you about a book I wrote called Seduced, The Grooming of America's Teenagers. It's all about how predators access, groom, recruit, and exploit our young people using social media, online gaming, video chat rooms. Technology is changing at the speed of light, and we have to understand how to keep our kids safe from predators. 
So you can get this book by going to www.meandkids.org. It's $16. I'll sign it and I'll ship it to you personally. We hope that you will order this book, Educate Yourself About How to Keep Our Kids Safe in This Day of Changing Technology. Join us each Saturday for our radio show at Exploited Crimes and Technology at 3 o'clock on AM 590, The Answer. Hello, this is Opal Singleton, a host of Exploited Crimes and Technology. Hey, we come to you every Saturday afternoon at 3 o'clock right here on AM 590, The Answer. I want to say how much I appreciate my partnership with AM 590. It's given me a platform to inform you as parents, as grandparents, as leaders, as civic leaders, as community leaders. And uh, this is an important subject. And without them, this, this program just would not be existing. And the other thing is, I want to thank the people that help us and help us stay on the air. Some of those people are Sam Manuel, especially the casino people, supported our work way back during COVID when things were just unbelievably tight. And um, and you're saying to yourself, we have to change our whole business model. And I usually go out and speak to audiences and sell my books and like that. And uh, boom, one day, start March 12th, it all went away. And uh, their contribution made a huge difference in my life. I want to give a shout out also to Children's Fund. That's an organization in San Bernardino that just does a massive and mighty work with um, at-risk kids. I was so impressed with what they did at Christmas time. They raised something like 53,000 gifts. But um, they have a contract that has um, allowed me to be compensated and be able to go on the air and educate you. And uh, if you want to uh, sign up for any of their courses, you can do that just by going to Children's Fund. I have five different courses I teach on there. If you want to get an in-depth education, I believe they're at no charge and they pay me. And I, I very much appreciate that. Children's Fund is an excellent organization in San Bernardino, and they're a great partner in this fight. So I, I really wanted to give a shout out. There's one more person, a couple more people I really want to shout out to, and that is Doris Anderson. She's a real estate agent over in Upland at Remax Realty and Colleen Horgan over at Armstrong Realty in uh, Riverside, uh, Coldwell Banker Armstrong Realty, Colleen Horgan. And they're just fabulous people that care deeply about this subject. And especially in Doris's case, every time she sells a house, she makes a donation. And I'll, t- I'll tell you, I really, really appreciate it. We can't do this by ourselves. We're a small but mighty agency. I mean, we cover a lot of territory. I'm not kidding when I say I've trained 500,000 people eye to eye, let alone, you know, I don't count you on the radio show because we're not eye to eye, okay, unless I meet you at the dry cleaners, and that's different. But anyway, uh, it's it's an interesting work, and uh, people say, why do you do it? Well, I tell you what, if you've ever sat with a parent who has a child who sent off a naked photo and they're being blackmailed and you discover it, it just uh, it just turns your whole family upside down. You know, and I in my case, I often refer them to counselors, licensed marriage, family therapists, the family, the parents need counseling. The child needs separate counseling. Why is it so important? Because think about what has happened. Their first sexual experience was one of exploitation and probably by somebody they cannot give a face to. I've written a couple of books. One of them is called Societal Shift, A World Without Borders, A Home Without Walls. And we talk about this concept of phantom relationships and, and prism of shame. You know, you think about that, you, you being blackmailed by somebody, you have no idea what they're like. And by the way, when I talk, I show you the photos of a bunch of these people. I love to show it to kids. You want to know where your naked photo went when you hit sand? (laughs) Check this guy out, okay? Because our kids go in believing it's going to be like some hot rock star and a gorgeous hunk or, you know, a hot little chick of some sort. And the next thing you know, their life has gone upside down forever. And uh, it doesn't end. Just like the kid I was telling you about, he was 13. He's ready to go to college and, uh, you know, he regrets it every day of his life, but he cannot get Twitter to take it down. 
And it's out there. It is all about who he is. And it will change him into a picture of damaged goods. And once you start functioning from that kind of position, you will be much more likely to be exploited. So it's really, really a problem in our area. We are having an absolute tsunami of human trafficking, meaning kids getting tricked and forced into prostitution. And yes, some of them while they're living at home. And we're also seeing it as they get blackmailed and don't know how to tell and their lives change. Now, I also want to take this to a different direction. This is very controversial, but I want to do it. I have had a very heavy heart about what is going on here at the border. And I'm just going to give you my opinion. Doesn't make me right, doesn't make me wrong, but I would bet you that I'm probably a little more informed than you because of hours and hours of of research and looking at cases. Now, one of the things I will tell you is that I report to the Riverside County Human Trafficking Task Force. I'm their training and outreach coordinator through the Riverside County Sheriff Department. Shout out to Sheriff Chad Bianco and also to DA Mike Hestron. They're doing a bang up job that when everybody else was closing down human trafficking task forces. And that's part of the problem right now is that, you know, when you take $150 million out of a police budget, you do not have a complex crime investigation unit because human trafficking cases, when your kid goes missing, can easily take, you know, 10,000 hours of investigation and you they simply won't happen. What's concerning to me is when kids are lured out of our area, they're taken over to LA and poof, they're gone and they have a compromised task force. So I'm proud of our people, but what I, where I was going with that is when I talk about the border crisis, I want you to know that I am not an extremist. Okay. In fact, I search my soul several times an hour on what to do and how to fix this crisis. And I just want you to stimulate your thinking on it, not to get you to take a position or, or not. But here is what I know after 10 years of doing this. First of all, I don't look, I try not to look at people as groups. Okay. We have Asian trafficking rings that are violating Asian people in our community. I, I just did that. By the way, you may want to sign up for me and kids insider alert. Just go to me and and sign up for insider alert. I analyze and present you with those cases. And we have large Asian sex trafficking rings taking place in the Inland empire. That is not a slander to Asians. Okay. You cannot look at all people and say all people are alike. There are good people and there are bad people. And I don't care what color, race, creed, you know, if you're purple and you weigh 2,000 pounds, I don't care. There are good people and there are bad people. And we have that taking place. We have that with unaccompanied minors in our community where they are being sex trafficked. I just talked about the Paredes family case where they were sex trafficking many unaccompanied minors and laundering the money through a fashion shop over in Colton. OK, so what happens in unaccompanied minors and, and these are factual kinds of cases is that just because they're here does not make them safe. And when you have a body of people crossing the border and you are not enforcing the rule of law, and this is where it all started. I was reading about it today with the uh, William Wilberforce Forced Trafficking Victims Protection Reauthorization Act of 2008. And the whole idea is how do you stop the flow of people? And then how do you keep the people from being violated that are on your property, especially knowing that they were being violated before you got here? And there is no rule of law. There is no method to meet and understand their background and sort them out as they come through the border and say, you're a sex offender. You don't get to come in. You have a criminal history. You don't get to come in. You're a coyote. You don't get to come in. And you're an abused, exploited young person. So you get to come in. The problem of it is, is when they're coming across the border six and 7,000 times a, a people a day, you don't know which ones are the good people and which ones are the bad people. I know many unaccompanied, 
excuse me, many uh, undocumented people that have lived in the U.S., many of them for many years. And they are fabulous, fabulous people. But along with those people came a lot of MS-13, came the cartel, came the coyotes. And you do not see busloads of those people going home. It breaks down to when you decide not to enforce the rule of law, then you open the doors to more and more crime. And there will be no fixing it. It will never be equitable. If we're waiting for an equitable solution to the fact that we have an open border, we have already lost the ball game because people are exploited before they get here, especially girls are raped and they are put out for trafficking. And when they get here, they owe their coyote money and they are raped up here and they are sold for sex trafficking. And our some of our businesses are being used to send billions of dollars back home. And that exploitation is taking place in our community. This is Opal Singleton. I'll be right back. Custom Service Systems, a proud supporter of Million Kids, is a family-owned and operated commercial cleaning company servicing the Inland Empire and surrounding areas since 1974. CSS takes pride in their ability to maintain the business facilities they serve and their long-lasting relationships with their valued clients. CSS provides a variety of cleaning systems customized to client needs, including deep cleaning and disinfectant to be COVID-19 compliant. From basic office cleaning to windows and floors, CSS will clean up your mess so you don't have to stress. Custom Service Systems cares about families and communities and wants to give back. Custom Service Systems are proud supporters of Million Kids to keep kids safe from predators. If you need the best cleaning services for your business or corporation, contact Custom Service Systems at cssclean.com. Again, cssclean.com or call 951-781-9345. That's 951-781-9345. You will know you found the best. Custom Service Systems. Hello, this is Opal Singleton of Exploited Crimes and Technology. Let me tell you about my friend Doris Anderson at Remax Realty in Upland. She is amazing. She's kind, she's patient, but she listens. And she's informed and she will help you with your real estate transaction in a way that works for you. Doris, in full disclosure, often supports the work of me and kids because she cares about young people. But she knows how to analyze a market, how to market a property, and how to find just the right transaction for both buyers and sellers. If you're looking to buy or sell real estate or invest in income property, contact Doris Anderson at Remax Realty 951-733-8899. That's 951-733-8899. 951-733-8899. This message is all about Million Kids, the organization that helps locate missing kids throughout Southern California and educates to keep kids safe from predators. Million Kids educates school administrators, teachers, parents, and teenagers how predators identify a potential victim and the methods they use to recruit innocent kids. BMW of Riverside is a proud supporter of Million Kids. Visit BMW of Riverside at the Adams Street exit off the 91 freeway or click bmwofriverside.com. AM 590. The answer. Hello, and welcome back to Exploited Crimes and Technology. One more time, I'd encourage you to follow us on millionkids.org. Uh, millionkids.org. Just go on there and hit sign up for our insider alerts. We send out cases about three times a week. I'm a little bit behind right now because I'm researching my brains out. Anyway, uh, but we send out uh, where I do case analysis of local cases. By the way, we just had a big case out in uh, Palm Desert. Our guys went out and 11 arrests in Palm Desert. Uh, They're really cooking hot there. Uh, Sheriff Bianca put out a second team out in the desert, and uh, they arrested 18 last week in a prostitution uh, diversion sting. And this week they did 11. Um, And these are all people that were uh, looking to have sex, in some cases sex with a minor. So we're the real deal here, okay? But... I really want you to understand what happens with 
the coyote world of when you go undercover, underground, and come in without documentation. You see, this started many, many years ago in what they call the Golden Triangle out of Nicaragua and Honduras and Guatemala in that area in El Salvador. And uh, I know that's a rectangular, not a triangle, but you get the point. Anyway, uh, and it was really hellacious down there. And so we did open the borders. Gee, this was way back when, um, you know, like 25, 30 years ago. And a lot of people came in. And then ultimately, a lot of them uh, were able to apply for asylum. And many of them got green cards and many of them became legal. But a lot of them did not. And then El Salvador, we deported thousands. It was like 70,000, I think, uh, gang members. Uh, out of our prisons back to El Salvador. And these were people who were raised in the U.S. because they they came over as kids, and now they're in a gang uh, in a prison in El Salvador. And so they became very, very vicious and formed MS-13. Now, MS-13 isn't the only gang involved in this, but they are known for being and providing coyotes and also drugs. And so gangs and cartels, what they do is they lure in people in, in these very, poor countries. And, you know, to be fair, I get it. You know, if I were born in Guatemala, you'd see me getting on a path up here. You know, I like the life I live and I can understand that they would like that life. I get that. But when you do business with the underworld, you're never free. And that's the part of the discussion that I don't hear on TV. You know, these people put debt against their property to send their kids up here. And oftentimes it takes two or three or four attempts or they don't get in. And now those people have lost their properties. And the the poverty gets worse and the homeland gets worse. The cartels have taken over so many of those countries and the corruption. So I get the individual being involved. But when they decide to come up here, especially girls, they know they're going to get raped. They know they're controlled by the cartel. And there is a good chance that when they get here, they're going to raise the price that they had to pay. They have no contracts, you know. A cartel can say it's 5000 down there, but once you get across the border, that cartel doesn't go home. They live in our community. And they say, and they are handed off to other cartels. And they say, nope, I need another 5000 And if you're a girl, they will put you up many times into forced prostitution. Or the other thing that will happen is they will take their their guys and put them in our schools and then they will use that to recruit our girls. And many times the girls owe money already to the coyote. Uh, what happens here is the girls feel comfortable because the guys speak Spanish. Uh, they're, they're, you know, kind of gang members. And the next thing you know, they're being uh, forced into just horrific sex acts. I'm talking about many, many a day. Okay. And this gets absolutely brazen. These girls are being highly violated. Now, you have all the headlines about have they been violated while they're in, in uh, you know, being kept at the coliseums that they're at or the, what do you call those, convention centers. I understand now we're over 22,000 uh, kids living in convention centers here, uh, San Diego, Murrieta, uh, Long Beach, and L.A., And uh, I want you to look carefully at those photos. Now, they will always put the six-year-old out front, okay? These, These news people know what they're doing. But if you look behind there, what you see is almost half of them are 15 to 17 year old males. You know, if you're 16, 17 years old in Guatemala, you know how to shoot an AK-47. And, you know, you're an adult. And what is happening is we are putting all these people together And some of those people are good people, and some of them are right there controlling and using them while they're in our custody. And then we release them out to the community to supposedly an aunt or an uncle or somebody, some relative, except they are not free to go. And they will place these kids in our schools, and then those kids will end up recruiting more kids into forced prostitution. So this is not an answer. Where I come from on this is that I can't fix this. This has been going on for 50 years now. 
at least. Isn't that amazing? When I read back to like in 2000 or 1980, and I say, that's 40 years ago, this has been going on. And, you know, the alternative is pull them all together and deport them. Okay. Except then they form gangs and come back or, you know, start to recognize that this is a broken system. And by, by bringing in more broken solutions is not going to keep these people from being exploited, that we have to call it what it is. Anytime we break the rule of law, re-breaking the rule of law again is not going to fix it. And it's going to take a mighty group of people that can really reach out and begin to provide these victims with services. Nobody ought to be sexually exploited. I don't care what nationality or what land you're on. Man, woman, and child ought to be free of sexual exploitation. But we brought the sexual exploitation in with them. And yes, men get exploited. And yes, men get exploited in our communities for what it's worth. So this has been hard to hear, I'm sure, most of you, but uh, I really feel the need to share the knowledge that I have together. I appreciate each and every one of you. If this show is helpful, you can write to me at opal, O-P-A-L, at millionkids.org, opal at millionkids.org. If you have it in your heart to, you know, send us some funding, that would just be fantastic. This is a hard, hard business that we're into, and I can't do it alone. My job is to educate you so that we can pray about it. We can find solutions. We can be kind to our fellow man, but we can also have an understanding of the value of the rule of law and support politicians that that really want to um, get law in order back on the books again. I think the farther we go off the way of law and order and doing away with the rule of law, the greater this system is going to deteriorate and it's going to be more and more difficult for us to be able to protect people who are being exploited. You know, the the volume right before our eyes of our kids who are playing online and getting exploited is heartbreaking enough. But to see that we're bringing in tens of thousands of other people who are being exploited, you say to yourself, our community is changing. And we need to pay attention. I can't give you the exact solution. Maybe since some of you have have heard this, you have a solution. And uh, I'm, I'm absolutely open to that. But I appreciate each and every one of you that listen to this show and share it with others. I also appreciate each and every one of you that send us a donation. You can either go at millionkids.org and uh, hit that donate button or text a donation. Or if you're old fashioned, put that check in the mail. I go to the post office box a couple of times a week can hope and pray there's something there. And so it's uh, always very helpful. Also, if you want to educate yourself more about how to deal with uh, kids online and how the seduction process works and where it's going, you might want to go to meandkids.org and order the book, uh, Seduce the Grooming of America's Teenagers, and also Societal Shift, A World Without Borders, A Home Without Walls. I'll sign those for you and send them out. They're not all that expensive, but they can educate you about how all this trafficking takes place with our kids in real time in our life. And societal shift is all about where this is going. We expect to have a movie come out. Uh, It is delayed because of COVID. They're now telling me June, but it's more than half done. It's looking good. And I thank each and every one of you that have supported our work to get that out there. The movie is all about how uh, where naked photos go when you hit send, okay, and how that Internet's made. And we want to put that free in every school in America so that we can train our kids and our grandkids to be leaders in a world without borders of advanced technology. So this is Opal Singleton. Thank you for joining us. I'd encourage you this week to put your arms around your kids. Look at them and tell them how proud you are of them. Look at your spouse. Say, I believe in you. I believe those are the four most powerful words on earth to stop trafficking. I believe in you. See you next Saturday, 3 o'clock.
Societal Shift, A World Without Borders and a Home Without Walls. This is the most important book you will read this year, especially if you have children or grandchildren. We are living at the most important time in all of history. In 2020, the entire world will be connected by internet, more than six billion people coming together. Technology will provide many great advantages for our kids, but a world without borders for our kids is also a world without borders for pimps, predators, pedophiles, cartels, and organized crime. It is a home without walls because 87% of the kids sleep with their phone. It is the greatest societal experiment of all time. Our kids are technology geniuses and their parents are technophobic. Some are techno impotent. New apps come with no warnings on how a predator will use them against our kids. Advancing technologies like encrypted messaging, vaporware, artificial intelligence, cryptocurrency, and the dark net will challenge law enforcement, teachers, and parents to keep kids safe. Recent research states that 9,000 kids a day are being blackmailed with a naked photo and 58% will meet their predator. It is indeed a societal shift and one in which most parents are unprepared. If you are a parent or grandparent, teacher, counselor, or social worker, please take time to read Societal Shift. Only $18.99 plus $6 shipping. Order today at millionkids.org. That's millionkids, M-I-L-L-I-O-N-K-I-D-S dot org. It'll be the greatest gift you can give your family and yourself. Order Societal Shift today. Million Kids takes checks and credit cards. Opal Singleton, the author, will personally sign the book and send it to you. Again, go to millionkids.org and order Societal Shift today. Join Million Kids. Keep our kids safe from predators.